dropped one for nothing. Pushed back now, no one's left alive. They've got to run. They've got to run. No, Danny steps up and Danny shuts down one. Mid laner is dead though. And oh, it's going to be another oh. kill in. Danny is doing Danny. it all. Danny shuts down FBI. It's Danny versus the world. It's Danny versus the 100 Thieves. And Danny is going to get one. Danny could get two. Holy God, he's so damn good. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and welcome back to the Outplay by Play. Last episode, we broke down Dom Juan Kia's macro masterclass that led to a 48 minute victory in a showdown against Gen G. This time around, we're headed back to North America, where a certain rookie of the year is making history with one of the greatest plays we've ever seen in the LCS. Let's take a deep dive into the action and see how Danny's insane late game carry led to a comeback victory against 100 Thieves. To kick things off, both teams played a close back and forth, with 100 Thieves striking first after finding a juicy Jizuke in the mid lane. On a flashless Lucian. Ooh, they're gonna find the Rupert. They know he's flashless. They know he has absolutely no way out. This should be a guaranteed kill. Exhaust for the slow for good measure. Q is gonna land first blood. 3v1 mid lane. As the game went on, it was neck and neck. With two kills on each side and a dragon per team, it was more or less even with EG having the slightest of advantages in three towers destroyed to just the one of 100 Thieves. But 20 minutes in with Baron spawning, it's 100 Thieves who ramp things up, finding a favorable team fight in the river thanks to some clutch engages from Huhi, killing off Contracts, Jizuke, and then Ignar for a three for one before going on to secure Baron. Just minutes later, it's another bloodbath for EG, this time around the next crucial objective of Mountain Drake. As both teams begin to set up around the Dragon Pit, take a look at the positioning and vision from each squad. EG are grouped up together, limited in vision, and can't see a single thing past the Dragon Pit wall. 100 Thieves, on the other hand, well, they're more spread out and have much more real estate to move around and see what's going on. As EG begin to chunk down the Dragon, it's 100 Thieves with an advantage to make a play. After seeing EG all bunched up towards the river brush, they move around the right side of the Dragon Pit wall, with Someday following up from the flank to collapse. And with 100 Thieves making their way around, they opt to call the Dragon off, gearing up for a fight. But unbeknownst to them, they're about to get pinched. As Huhi finds the engage onto both Ignar and Impact, Someday drops Cannon Barrage on the EG front line, chunking them to just half their health. EG are actually able to disengage, but re-aggress with the Orn ult onto Huhi, who gets instantly bursted down after hooking himself in. But with an advantage in both health and damage on the side of 100 Thieves, it was all but a small glimpse of hope for EG. Take a look at Contracts, who dives in for the three-man ult, but gets immediately eviscerated. From there, it's all downhill for the members of EG as they're caught in a sword fight without any swords and are left running for the hills as they get picked apart one by one for the ace. With that team fight, they were able to rip through the mid lane, destroying tier one, two, and three turrets before going on to secure the Mountain Drake for a 6,000 gold lead. But it didn't stop there. 100 Thieves kept their foot on the gas, finding yet another favorable team fight after a failed EG brush ambush to make it a three for one, as they went on to secure their second Baron of the game. 30 minutes in, things looked grim for the side of EG, with 100 Thieves sitting on nearly a 9,000 gold lead as they looked to end the game with Baron empowered minions marching up the mid lane. As they approach the base, watch Abadaga, who channels Realm Warp with his entire team and the minion wave into the bottom inhibitor turret to send it crashing down. It's at this point that Thieves look poised to end the game with just one more fight. But, as fate would have it, EG find the fight of their lives. Take a look at Impact, who finds the clutchest of Orn ults, catching four players. Now, watch Danny, who is just free firing from the backline to first delete Huhi, then FBI, who gets sent to the moon thanks to Impact, before Rocket jumping into the fray for the triple kill onto Abadaga. And so, Evil Geniuses make it a 3 for 2 and live to see another fight, thanks to some well-coordinated team play and the young rookie Danny who's just having none of it. As both teams reset and suit up for the next crucial objectives with Baron and Mountain Soul right around the corner, it's yet another brawl that's about to ensue. And well, I'm sure most of you know exactly what's about to happen next. 
34 minutes in, with both teams dancing back and forth in the mid lane, waiting to see who bites first, it's EG who find the double knockup onto Huhi, bursting him down to just a sliver of health as he flashes away to safety with his shield to stay alive. Now keep your eyes on Huhi, who actually finds the re-engage onto Danny with a hook. Danny's rocket jump timing, however, is just perfect to evade the CC and allow him to pop stopwatch mid-air. And because Danny is in stasis, it actually forces Huhi to land his ult onto Ignar, who's standing right on top of him instead. From there, it's a do or die brawl as Impact dashes forward to protect his star AD carry when he comes out of stopwatch, but nearly dies in the process as he's forced to flash away. When Danny comes out of stasis, he's able to deal a ton of damage, forcing some members of 100 Thieves back as both teams clash into a flurry of Zonias and stopwatches. But with almost every player on low HP, it's 100 Thieves who initially come out on top, killing off Contracts and Ignar before the rest of EG are left running for their lives. Danny at this point, who's the lone player with a full bar of health, is the only thing standing between 100 Thieves and an end to this game. But watch as he kills Closer with a combo of Explosive Charge and three autos before flashing away to dodge Spectral Maw, as well as the Nautilus Hook. At the same time, Abadaga channels Realm Warp with Sunday to pinch the three remaining members of EG, leaving Danny with the only option of fighting his way out. As Abadaga and Sunday both burn a flash to kill off Jizuke, keep your eyes on Danny, who rocket jumps forward onto a low HP FBI, forcing him to pop his stopwatch before turning his sights onto Huhi to kill him off with just two auto attacks. From there, he rocket jumps forward again, but pay attention to his decision making. He chooses to auto the Gangplank Barrel instead of finishing off Kai'Sa to negate any possibility of a follow-up onslaught. And with the help of Impact, he then finishes off FBI with just two autos. Now, as he continues his push forward, notice how he's also clearing the minion wave to prevent the remaining members of 100 Thieves to turn around and go for the end. As he approaches the Tier 2 turret, watch how he steps towards it and absorbs a tower shot to dodge the GP barrel before rocket jumping into the brush and instinctively place a blue ward into the midst of the chaos. Though placing this ward itself had no tangible benefit to him in the outcome of the fight, it really shows how composed and calm he was in such a high pressure scenario. Someday, who has no idea if he ran or is still in the brush, walks in to face check and gets deleted with a combo of explosive charge and five autos. Then, watch as the Rookie of the Year makes quick work of Abadaga with three autos and a rocket jump to dodge the Rise Q. But pay attention to the details. He actually jumps behind the cannon minion and not on top of Rise. By doing so, Danny is able to fully secure the kill and avoid any other skill shots from hitting him. Then, with just another auto, he can safely finish off Abadaga for the unofficial Penta kill. And just like that, off a truly historical play from the Star 80 carry, the outcome of the game had flipped like a switch. EG would go on to deny the Mountain Soul and secure Baron, before strutting down mid with Danny leading the charge for the comeback win and the carry of the century. I'm Captain Flowers, and that's it for this week's episode of the Out Play by Play. Let me know what you think. Is Danny the real deal and the best AD carry to come out of North America, or is it still too soon to tell? Be sure to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter to keep up with everything League of Legends Esports, and I'll catch you back here next time.